What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In the last video, I got a lot of the heat protection installed in the Evo. I did the firewall heat shield in the back back there, and then I also did the aluminum valve cover up top. I did manage to over tighten one of the valve cover bolts, and I did break it off into the head. I ordered this little extractor kit off of Amazon, and it worked perfectly. Once I got all of that installed, I was also finally able to take the car out for a little drive. I was not able to do anything crazy with it just yet, but I am very, very close to getting this thing tuned. I've got a few last little goodies that I need to install on the Evo. So for this video, I will be installing a second wide band to tune with, new blow-off valve, spark plugs, and then I will also be doing a compression and boost leak test. Stay tuned. If you didn't see the last video, definitely go check it out. Here is the firewall heat shield that I installed and then obviously the aluminum valve cover. These valve cover bolts get torqued down to just four foot pounds. Like I said, I did manage to actually break this one off in here. Here's a little extractor kit that I bought off of Amazon. It worked great, it pulled it right out of there. And then after installing the new clutch, I was able to get about 100 miles on the car. ACT does recommend two to 300 miles, so I do need to put a few more miles on it before I can get it tuned. I've also got a few other smaller things that I still need to install before the tuning process. First thing up is the second wide band. Originally I bought a glow shift wide band which I still really like. The problem is is that you actually can't tune with it. I am going to keep this gauge. I am going to run with this one. I'm just going to be using the Innovate one to tune with. And since I'm just using this thing to tune with I don't have to find a permanent place to mount it up. There's also no need to hardwire anything in. The other thing that I picked up to go along with this is this little extension harness. There's a guy on eBay that sells these in pretty much any length that you need it. The sensor plug for the Bosch wide band literally ends right where it comes up in through the footwell. To get to this, you have to remove all of these plastic pieces to pull this back. If I ever need to retune anything, I don't want to have to take all of this part just to get to that. So that's where that extension harness comes into play. Here's the glow shift sensor plug down here, and you can see just kind of where it wraps up in there. So that's exactly where I'm going to run that extension harness. It'll come right up out through here. You can see where I've got all of my other wiring already tucked back in there. If I ever need to disconnect or reconnect anything, it'll just be right there. I'm going to run this extension harness to the top. I'm going to get all of my plastic pieces put back together, and then I'll work on getting this wideband installed.
Second wideband is finally working. It took a little bit of finagling to get this thing to finally work. Let me shut it off and I will tell you everything that I did. My first attempt at a power and ground source was to use this little cigarette lighter switch. The problem that I kept running into is the gauge kept reading out an error nine code. According to the manual, error nine means low voltage. Just not enough juice pumping through there to keep this thing working right. What I ended up doing was taking this random harness that I had. It has about five or six wires in there. There's no fuse right now. It's just coming straight from the battery, but I do have this little switch in line so it's not turned on all the time. As you can see back here, here's the two wires coming from the harness, one going to the power and then one going to the ground. Wiring it straight to the battery actually worked. I got no more error nine codes, but I started getting an error eight code. I recalibrated this thing probably five different times and I kept getting the same code. Once the sensor heated up, it would show just a couple of numbers. It wouldn't bounce back and forth. It was just two random numbers. It would always end up at the 22 and then it would throw the error eight code. According to the manual, it just says that it's a heating problem and that the sensor needs to be replaced. Luckily with the new gauge, it also came with a new sensor. It was kind of a pain in the butt to take all of this apart again, just to replace a new sensor. But after I got the new sensor in, everything works fine. Once I am finished tuning with this, like I said, I'm just gonna remove everything and then I will plug up my glow shift gauge over here. So don't worry, all of this janky wiring will be going away once the car is tuned. Now that the wide band is working appropriately, I'm gonna move on to the next thing. Next up is the compression test. Since I'll have the old plugs out, I went ahead and got some new ones just to throw in there. I did pick this tester up off of Amazon. I really like the digital output. I feel like this is something I should have probably bought a long time ago. I didn't do this on my ST when I did it, but I went ahead and picked this up for the Evo. Usually doing a compression test, you want to do that before you do anything to the car just to make sure the motor is healthy. It would really suck to find out that I have a cylinder with low compression after everything that I've done to the car. <laughs> You want to start the car for a few minutes, let it get up to operating temperature. It allows those rings to warm up and seal a little bit better. You may actually get a full slow reading if you do it cold. I let the Evo warm up for about five or 10 minutes. I just got to put this thing together and we can test it out.
car is started back up. I got everything put back together. Compression is good on all four cylinders. And then I also got the new spark plugs in with no issues. This is the old spark plug that I pulled out of cylinder four. It looks like the previous owner actually swapped out the OEM plugs for these same NGK Iridium plugs. When I actually did the compression test, every single time I pulled it out, there was a bunch of anti-seize on there. So I didn't put any on the new ones. It looked like the previous owner put plenty on his. So I just left what was on there. Compression in cylinder one was 121.8, cylinder two, 122.8. Cylinder 3, 123.5, and then cylinder 4 was 129.5. All the numbers are perfectly within spec though. For anyone looking for torque specs on the Evo 10 spark plug so you don't make any unnecessary mistakes, it is 18 foot pounds plus or minus 3. An actual spark plug socket makes it a whole lot easier too. It grips the top of that spark plug to help pull it out and kind of make out the little rubber liner in there that grips onto it. Now that the compression test is done, I know the motor is healthy and all of the new spark plugs are in. I'm going to move on to the next test, which is is the boost leak test. Like the compression tester, owning a couple of turbocharged cars, I probably should have already bought one of these, but better late than never. I also picked this kit up off of Amazon. Each one of these things is tapered, so it actually fits multiple sizes with just one size. I won't be using these, but if you did have to run a leak test and needed to plug off the other end, that's what these are for. I searched online, and there is not really a definitive answer on where to actually put this piece. Since the intake is all vacuum, and the first point of positive pressure is pretty much right here, I would assume this is the best place. But I have seen a lot of videos of other guys putting it on the intake side of the turbo. I'm not really concerned with this coupler, and I'm really not concerned with this coupler either. These are really good connections. Only concerns would be this little small gasket back here. It actually looked good when I pulled it off for the turbo swap, but the edges were a little bit rusty and worn. And the only other real concern I had, you can't really see it, but it's the bottom coupler going into the lower intercooler piping. In the corner down there, you can barely see it, but you can see the two couplers holding it together. And then on the front side that you can't see here, fitment was a little off. It's not too bad. It's just not as perfect as the upper intercooler piping was. I had a couple of couplers pop loose while I was tuning the ST, so that's one thing I've definitely learned to change. Check. I just want to make sure I don't hear any air leaks on those. Let's do it. Fast forward a couple of days, I made a little mistake with my purchasing. When I was looking at these Boost Leak Test Kits online, they had a couple with the blue cases and I just really liked it. I actually ordered a couple of different ones and I had to send them both back. They both came with the wrong size fitting. The design on these is a little bit different. The one that actually came with the blue case, the fitting was permanently in there. It had plastic surrounding it. Well, it does suck that I had to wait a couple of days to actually do this. Still gotta get the fitting in there and then we can test this thing out. Everything seems to be working appropriately with this thing. It actually is very, very nice. However, I do seem to have a little bit of a problem with the car. I'm gonna be real quiet and let you see if you can hear that hissing sound. It really sounds like it's coming from where this injector goes in and if I move it around, it seems to change the sound of the hiss. Hoping it's just maybe the O-ring down there where that thing seals. As you can see, there's not hardly any pressure built up in there at all and it's already leaking, so I don't wanna push it. One good thing is I already have new injectors to replace these, so they will come with new O-rings. The power that I wanna make, these 1050s will not be enough. I'll do it again once I get the new injectors in. I'm gonna go ahead and take this back off. I'll get the upper intercooler piping put back together for the time being. I've got one. One last little goodie I want to install for this video. I picked this blow off valve up off of Marketplace. It is a Tile QR. It is the recirculating one. Brand new, these things are about 250 bucks. The guy that I bought it from, I'm not sure what application he was trying to use it for, but he said that he couldn't use it because he didn't realize that it needed to be welded on. So it's basically brand spanking new. I picked it up for 95 bucks shipped. Got a pretty sweet deal there. And so that I don't have to do any welding, I picked this little adapter up from Torque Solutions. This 
will allow me to remove the little weld on piece here and then I can use the V-band to clamp that down. I've also already opened it up and I pulled the spring out. From what I've been told, the best spring to run with on the Evo 10 is the black spring. The next step up, which is the white spring. This is the step up from the white spring. It's what's called the plain spring. This is the one that was already in it when I got it. The white one I had left over from when I had the ST. For anybody running a Focus ST, the plain spring is the one you need. I'm gonna get the blow off valve open back up, get the black spring in there. I'll get the adapter on and then we'll get it on the car. is completely installed. The adapter from Torque Solutions worked perfectly. There's nothing to really test out, but I love the way that it looks. I really like how the setup is starting to look. I love how everything is just kind of blacked out. And all the metal pieces right now have the raw look. This thing should be ready to tune anytime now. Tuning is just as expensive as some of these parts, so I just want to make sure that I have everything in order before I actually start the tuning process. Like I said before, I'll be replacing the 1050s with bigger injectors. I actually have them right here. They are FIC 1440s. And then I picked up a new fuel filter as well. But those will be for the next video. I am going to end this video here. I really hope you liked it. If you did, please hit that like button. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Those comments really help out. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can see everything else going on with the Evo. And I will catch you guys next time. Bye.